Welcome to Jaguar Boot Camp, setting up your Jaguar network. The information in this presentation is the property of Innovative Timing Systems. All of this information is confidential and may not be disclosed to anyone outside of Innovative Timing Systems or your own company without written authorization from the president of Innovative Timing Systems. This presentation is only provided to customers who are under a current support agreement that has not expired. The Jaguar system has the capability of sending chip reads or announcer information from one system to another or perhaps from a Jaguar timing system to an announcer display. This can be done at any timing point on the course. To set this up, you have to understand a little bit about networking. So let's take a look at uh, settings in our defaults and we'll talk about how that might get set up. Okay, you'll notice under the network settings, we have a number of options that are available to us. And let's talk about how uh, we would set those up. First of all, you're going to have to decide if you're going to use a wired or a Wi-Fi network. Typically, we like to use a wired network if we can. And the reason for that is that at a finish line, for example, where there might be hundreds or even thousands of people with cell phones, sometimes that can interfere with our Wi-Fi networks. So we'll try to always use a wired network if possible. But again, if you can't do that, why? Wi-Fi is your next best choice. Now when you set up your Wi-Fi router, you're going to want to make sure that your laptops or your desktops and your Jaguar system are all on the same network. So you've probably done that before, say with your laptop, where you pop up the little icon on the bottom right part of the screen and you connect to a network. Step one is to always make sure that all of your computers are on the same network. Once that's done, then we have to set up some of these basic defaults you see here on the network tab. So first of all, we have the option that says send to remote enabled. If we want this Jaguar system to send something to perhaps another Jaguar system or to the announcer PC, we have to check this box send to remote. So we've done that here. The next thing we have to do is we have to provide the remote socket. Well, what is a remote socket? Sounds kind of cryptic, but it's not. Think of it as almost like a street address. We're going to say to the computer, we want to send some information over to house number 6001. Now under announcer software, or perhaps on your kiosk, you're going to be listening for messages on the network, and you're going to tell the network that you're sitting at 6001. In the case of Jaguar, we can have multiple people that live at the same address. So you ha might have a kiosk or two or three or four of them all uh, residing at 6001, and you might have four or five announcers doing the exact same thing. So 6001 is nothing more than a way to say, Jaguar, I want you to send to a recipient who ha whose address is 6001. Over on the announcer software, or perhaps in your kiosk, you'll say, I live at 6001, and I'm listening for messages coming from 6001. Okay? That's as easy as it is. Just like that. 6001 is the remote socket we're going to send information to. Now, below that, we see an IP address. If you haven't seen one of these before, don't panic. Pretty simple. Essentially, most of your routers that you're going to use, both Wi-Fi or wired, they almost always come with an address that starts with 192, period, 168, period, 1.250 or 200 or 10. Now, if you're a real networking pro, you're going to not say period. You're going to say dot. In fact, that's how it's typically called in our industry. We'll say 192.168.1.255. And most of the time, it's this third digit right here, this 1. It'll either be 0, 1, or 2 for most routers. The way to find that out is to simply look at the router configuration information. Typically, most routers you connect to with a browser. Or if you bought a router, it may have come with a CD that lets you set up that router. Nonetheless, you've got to find out what the address is. And we've given you an example. Linksys routers made by Cisco almost always start off with 192.168.1. Now, just beyond that, you'll see we've typed in 255. Why is that? Well, it turns out on networks, if you put 255 in, you're telling Jaguar through the network, I want you to send this message to every single PC that is sitting on my network. In networking world, if you don't know, this address, if I typed in, for example, 101, that would mean I want to send this information to a particular PC. And in fact, that PC would have to be the PC sitting at address 101.
So to make it easy for us, if we enter 255, and this goes back 20 years in the networking world, 255 is reserved on all networks to mean it's a broadcast, meaning send it to everybody. So by using 255 at the end of our address, we're essentially saying we want to send to remote computers who are listening for messages on 6001 information if they're on this network, every PC on the network. That's what 255 means. All right, below that we have my location. Now, you could type in a short description if you'd like to that says this is where the information is coming from, but generally speaking, we'll tell you to leave it blank. And the reason for that is let's say that you have, oh, I don't know, a PC at the finish line and you're running Jaguar on that and you're connected to a bronze timing system and your PA announcer is getting ready to call out names of finishers. Well, Jaguar is going to automatically send with the information about the chip rate. It's going to send the fact that it's being used at the finish line. And it knows that because your database mode would be set to finish line. So by leaving this blank, we'll simply take the database mode, whether that's split one, two, three, or if it's finished, no matter what it is, we'll send it out with that information, that chip read, okay? So typically, you're going to leave this blank. Now below that, you'll see the ability to listen for messages. Remember, if we have a system perhaps backing up our primary finish line, so think of it this way. You've got a system at the finish line, and 35 to 40 feet behind that, you have a backup system. Well, we want that backup system to send to the primary system so that we have complete redundancy. And to, for that to happen, we have to tell the primary, you need to be listening for messages that might be coming from a backup. So the only time we ever use this listen feature. Most of the time this box isn't checked. If it's checked, it's because we're telling this Jaguar system, you're going to be listening for messages coming in from another Jaguar system. Now, if we're going to listen for messages, much like above, we have to tell the system what address or socket we're going to be listening on. And so we've said 6002 here. The range of numbers, by the way, for your sockets could be anything from 5,000 to about 9,000. We tend to use 6,001 through re regularly 6,010, somewhere in that range. And the reason for that is they're not used by anything else that we're aware of. These are socket numbers that any program can use out in the free world. Uh, and generally speaking, 6,000 to 6,010, which is more than enough for most of you, has always been open and not been used by somebody else. Okay, So we're going to tell Jaguar, listen on 6,002. And then we have this timeout value. What that means is when you're listening for messages, uh, you're only going to listen for so long before you say, oh, that message started to come in, but it never did finish. Maybe it got lost en route to us. So you can tell it how long to wait. Don't ever change this value from 100 unless you've talked to a Jaguar. Jaguar engineer or one of our support people who's told you, uh, you might change that to 150 or 200. Generally speaking, 100 is always uh, the right value, okay? And if it's going to change, it's generally going to go up, maybe 150 or 200. As an example, let's say that we were getting a lot of errors when we send a message from one Jaguar system to another. In other words, maybe the cable was quite a long distance and some of the packets were being lost. Well, we might increase this value from 100 to 150 or even 200, giving Jaguar more time to let a message come in before it uh, generates an error message. All right, so generally speaking, we won't have this box checked. We're probably not going to listen most of the time, again, unless we are listening for messages from a backup Jaguar system. So for this uh, training module, let's just assume that all we want to really do is just send our chip reads from Jaguar to the announcer software. You've loaded the announcer software on a laptop. You've given it to the PA announcer who's going to call out the winners and people who are finishing the race, and you want them to see those chip reads coming in. You're going to check this box, set it to 6001. You're going to set your address to 255 like I've done here, and then you're going to come down and you're going to check the announcer info box. What you're now doing, just like it says, is you're telling this Jaguar system, I want you to send announcement information over to the announcer software or perhaps the kiosk. So if you're using a kiosk and you want all the results to come streaming into the kiosk as people cross the finish line, you have to check this box. Okay. Now, what if I want to send a read? In other words, I want to send maybe the backup system reads to the primary system. Well, then I would check this box. I would say I want to send reads. Could I do both? You could. You could actually say I want this system to not only send announcer stuff or announcer information, I want it to also send its reads out, and you can do that. 
The third option is for remote sync. If you're using the Jaguar remote software, you can tell this system every 20 seconds I want you to send what we call a keep alive message. It's just a message going over to the remote software saying, hey, I'm connected to you, you're connected to me, and we're having a great conversation behind the scenes. Why do we do that? Well, I'll tell you why. If you had the remote software loaded on like a netbook or a laptop computer, and you happen to walk out of range of your Wi-Fi router, and you didn't know it. In other words, you didn't realize you were too far away. You'll get a warning message in Jaguar. If you check this box for remote sync, after 20 seconds, if Jaguar can't talk to the remote anymore because you've run out of the range of the router, you'll get an error message on Jaguar, and you'll get it on the remote system. The remote software will actually say you've walked out of range. Would that really happen? Not likely. Most of the time, you're probably within 20 or 30 feet, if you're using Jaguar Remote, of the finish line. But that's what this sync box is for. If you don't plan to use Jaguar Remote, don't check it. If you're not going to be sending something from one Jaguar system to another, don't check this box. It just creates unnecessary overhead. Finally, there's a box down here. You should never check this box unless you're a true expert on Jaguar and you have very specific reasons for using it. If you check this box, what essentially will happen is we'll clear the network buffer that's inside that Windows PC every time Jaguar starts up. That could actually cause you to lose chip reads if you rebooted the PC or if the laptop went down. So as an example, if the laptop just rebooted for some odd reason and there were reads that were waiting uh, in the Windows buffer, uh, this box will clear, uh, if you check it, it will clear out those reads. Something you don't typically want to do. Very advanced users uh, will use this box and if you're attending the Jaguar Academy and taking some of our advanced courses, you'll learn more about why you might use that checkbox. But uh, for now, unless you're truly an expert, never check that box and that's why you see the warning there. Okay, so let's go back and recap what we've learned for our network settings. We've got maybe an announcer system where we're showing results. Perhaps we have a few kiosks and we want that, uh, those kiosks to get uh, information as people cross a finish line. Well, to send out information from Jaguar, we have to check the box Send to Remote. We then have to provide a destination address or socket, which is going to be 6001. Correspondingly, on our announcer and kiosk software, we have to make sure they're listening on 6001. They're listening for those messages. We then have to set the network address. If we're only sending to a single PC and we know the IP address, we could type that in, say 156. But, in fact, if we want to send the announcer information to multiple computers, which is often the case, maybe we have multiple announcers or kiosks, then we're going to use a broadcast address, which is always 255. We're going to leave my location blank and let Jaguar send that out. We're never going to check the listen box unless we're listening for uh, reads that are coming in from a second Jaguar system. And if we do decide to listen for reads, we'll set the listen socket, and the timeout will probably be a 100. Again, in our case, we kept it pretty simple here on this screen. We just simply wanted to be able to send announcer information over to the announcer PC, so we've just checked the announcer box. There's one last button you'll notice on this screen, and that's called Refresh Network. If you need to make a change during the race, for example, let's say your Wi-Fi router crashed, and you have a backup Wi-Fi router, okay, and it's up and running, but you need to make sure everybody's talking over that now. You could come in here and you could change the address if you needed to, or maybe you need to change a socket. You could do that, and then you could click on Refresh Network. What that will do is Jaguar will reestablish with Microsoft Windows all of the network settings, sort of refire up the network and you don't have to get out of the Jaguar software. You'll notice here it says note restart the software after changes or click on your refresh button. So if you're changing this information after the race has started, the IP address or the sockets, you're going to have to check the or click on the refresh network box. That will take typically about 20 to 30 seconds. It'll go through and reset up all the network settings for you and then you're good to go. All right, finally, the last thing we have to do after we've set up the network settings here is we've got to save those settings out to the disk, just like we would for any other defaults. Remember, we're just using the network tab in our default settings, and much like any of the other settings, we have to save this after we're done. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to do this, there are additional videos already on its social that talk about how to set up announcer and how to do other networking tasks. 
I hope this information has been helpful. And don't be shy about setting up your network and testing it at home before you go out for the big race. It's always a good idea to make sure you fully understand how to do that uh, before you show up on race day. Thanks for attending this module. We'll see you on the next one soon.